So a lot of people are baffled how a hundred devs can make a better game than a game that was made by 3,000 devs. Bruh. You don't believe me? Get ready for the climax. Like the video if you think microtransactions are ruining gamings. Dislike the video if you think a hundred dollars microtransaction is perfectly fine. You don't believe me? Yep, there was a hundred dollar microtransaction recently in Call of Duty. Uh, but wait for the climax, roll it. How does a game about alien bugs beat Call of Duty? And how do 100 developers beat 3,000? This should Damn. be impossible. Like Nicki Minaj being in a Call of Duty game. Oh yeah. In this video... We're but, but there wasn't just Nicki Minaj in the game, there was also more than just Nicki Minaj, I'm just saying. Bro. We're gonna explore why Helldiver Sue's shocking success is more than just the win for COD players. It could be a return to what game development used to be. So let's get right into how this masterpiece uh -huh. did the impossible to beat Call of Duty. Holy. Why it's making everyone's nipples hard. Hit that yeah. like button, subscribe if you love democracy. The night uh, and day difference between- I, I don't think democracy exists anymore, bro. I think these two uh, games, but, uh, Helldivers 2 and Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, all goes back to the developers. Listen again to me closely. 100 developers versus 3,000 developers. You would think the smaller team doesn't stand a chance, but nope. The devs at Arrowhead Games actually listen to the community. They said they will never add PvP because they want to keep the toxicity that comes with it away. Doesn't it feel awesome that developers actually care about the quality of your playing experience? It's a strange feeling to experience this after the year we had of Modern Warfare 2 2022, developed by Infinity Ward. Oh, Everything man. fell on deaf ears that year, and the community was a mess. One yeah. of the biggest criticisms against Call of Duty is- Modern Warfare 2 made Call of Duty Van Garbage look 10 times better, bro. It's insane. Games yearly. This especially rang true with MW3, as it clearly was intended to be DLC, DLC. to MW2 yeah. 2022, but Activision just couldn't resist <laughs> slapping that $70 price tag. And, and the funniest thing here is that, like, I was reading a report a while ago, and those things were like, that's just way too much content. That's just too much content to be a DLC, therefore we're gonna turn it into a $70 game. Bro, what? You suck is crazy? They took Warzone, right? And from Warzone map, they made like their their campaign. The campaign wasn't even that original, dog. It was it had some Warzone aspect to it. it uh, come on, man. And then they upped the the BBC bundles and all that. The very friendly and Nicki Minaj Bruna, which is fine. I mean, you can have that Bruna here and there, but, but like, damn, bro, damn, bro. And now they got the eighty dollars monkey punch, hundred dollars microtransaction. I'm not kidding, by the way. It actually happened. In a game that clearly needed way more time to develop. It's a scam. It but is, Arrowhead yeah. Game Studios, the small developer team of Helldivers 2, made Helldivers 2 the right way. They yeah. worked on the game for seven years before Holy. releasing it, versus COD working on MW3 for barely over a year. Inexcusable. But that's just the irritating reality of COD's business model. Release a game unfinished and drip feed content to your consumers year after year. Sadly, it works for many COD suckers. Recently, however, more and more players have been waking up to this in the COD community and ditching the franchise. And guess where everyone is ending up? Waking up? Fighting for a democracy. The players truly do appreciate the passion behind Helldivers 2. I know the whole liberty and freedom thing is kind of a meme, but you literally feel liberated after going from Modern Warfare 3 to Helldivers 2. You're free from the misery of skill-based matchmaking and engagement-optimized matchmaking. And the concept of immersion in modern Call of Duty? Non-existent. Mm, oh, non did you expect a military shooter to not have Nicki Minaj? You, sir, are now a dumbass. I just miss when no one had a choice for their operator skins. It was like, wanna be a sniper? Okay, yeah. you'll have a ghillie suit. I, I do miss this, even in Battlefield 3. Uh, Battlefield 3 also had that. I also do miss this uh, factions thing uh, in Battlefield as well. I remember Battlefield 3 had like the real like soldier feel it, it had that realistic but still like arcadey and fun feeling to it right that's what i miss in battlefield and, and obviously in call of duty as well call of duty was full-on like arcadey like no realism but it had realism in terms of like the skins and the look of the game now personally i'm not like super against like the wacky stuff though but but like i'm 100 percent against the idea of hey them prior prioritizing hundred dollars microtransaction over in-game content that everybody can enjoy right now it's like game gets new map after months but like new twenty dollar bundles this time like hundred dollars eighty dollars uh, monkey punch <laughs> every week every week they have microtransactions coming every week but new content is nowhere to be found bro the fall skins made call of duty immersive because it fit the theme of the game you didn't have legit furries running around the map 
and it eliminated the garbage concept of pay to win. Because if you didn't know, when you buy skins in Modern Warfare 3, the game gives you an unfair advantage over someone who has not bought a skin. So everyone line up for the next farm animal. Immersive, right? With that being yeah. said, let me ask you this. Can you uh -oh. remember the last time you played a live service game and it wasn't poisoned by a battle pass? Feels weird to think about, right? And it's sad to say it's been that long since a Call of Duty game didn't have it. And let's face it, it's no coincidence COD went downhill ever since. Why do I say that? Well, why do you think, Stanley? The battle pass killed progression in Call of Duty. Just look at Modern Warfare 3 2023. What's the point in even grinding? Literally the only reason to play is to unlock tokens. Tokens COD players wish they could use to refund their oh, purchase man. of MW3. Instead, we use tokens to unlock new weapons that are going to get nerfed by next season. We also use tokens to unlock cosmetics and skins. The best ones being locked behind a paywall anyway. Yeah, and anyways, by best, yeah. I really mean you need to be evaluated if you actually <laughs> bought this. Remember the old prestige system Call of Duty used to have? That's when progression existed, not depression. This classic prestige system yeah. enabled a simplistic way to level up and gave meaning. It was so good, bro. It was so good, and I don't even understand the battle pass no more that they got going on in the game. It is a, it is a confusing. Uh, it is confusing. It is not looking. It's it's not good looking as well. It doesn't even have content. Like objectively, it doesn't even have the content that supports it. Right? Like who cares if I don't like the battle pass? Who cares if you don't like it? But objectively, the battle pass don't even have that content. Back in the days, like with prestige system, yeah, if you wanted, you could reset. Or if you did, if you did not want to like prestige, yeah, yeah, you had the option to stay. But now it's like. Everybody stays on the same level, and, and the grindability and the, the, the progression is just not there. Like, most of the, the progression that truly matters, that's gonna give you big dopamine, is behind a paywall. And, uh, yeah, like, th therefore, like, if you were to spend money, you're gonna get negative dopamine, essentially. Uh, this is why I'm like, uh, this is why I'm saying, like the video if you think microtransactions paywall ruining the games dislike the video if you're saying not uh, uh and if you dislike and if you say not i i mean you're probably like a rich mofo uh, but even at that point if you're rich like think critically right like don't think because you have a lot of money but think critically uh, about the game and the uh, from an objective standpoint it, it would be I, I would be curious to know what you guys think for sure to the multiplayer grinds it's pretty sad when call of duty 4 a game that released in 2007 does it better than the same franchise over a decade later. Yeah. That's why I enlisted in the Helldivers. And Helldivers- Th Thank you for subscribing. Too, they did the battle pass way better than Call of Duty. And you know what the crazy part is? It's not even really a battle pass. The War Bond encourages you to play more, to unlock more, not pay more. It is so refreshing to play a live service game yeah, and wow. actually have something to progress towards, other than a mental breakdown. Think about it. What is the biggest difference between Helldivers 2 and Call of Duty? Look here at the Call of Duty store, try without gagging. Now look at the Helldivers 2 store. What do you notice? I don't know about you, but all I can think of is one word. And it starts with an M. You have three seconds to guess the word before I blow these bugs up. Uh oh. Uh, 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 I need more time. I need more time. Money? M for money? M for money? 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 Microtransactions. Oh, Microtrans yeah, yeah. But money! Essentially, it means money, guys. Like, come on. It means money. Money equals microtransaction. Mi microtransaction equals money. My and every time I see the money microtransaction, my VB don't go boing boing. So there's that. Transactions are a thorn in a COD player's ass. In Bundle Warfare 3, you literally cannot avoid any of these skins or cosmetics. Whether oh, it's Nicki Minaj bruh. or freaking Duck, you better get used to it bruh. because they're not going anywhere. Because yeah. the same people who are probably commenting right now, Don't like it, don't play. Not my fault you're broke. Or the same people buying these stupid ass bundles and loading up on COD points. But Helldivers yeah, 2 on reason. the other hand has none of this garbage. It doesn't shove any FOMO driven bundles in your face, which is so refreshing to experience for once. And here's the crazy- And I could be wrong, but it's like, I, I did hear that this gave us $40. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I did hear it's $40. I don't have it, and, and yeah, I, I'm not the target audience, but I heard nothing but good stuff about the game. I got nothing bad to say. Why would I have anything bad to say when I haven't even played the game, right? With Call of Duty, it's like, I, I, play, I play every single year. So I, I, I looked at Modern Warfare 3, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't look good, therefore I didn't buy it. But with Helldivers, it's like, everybody has good things to say, so I, I believe it. I, I definitely believe it, but, but, but like, sadly, I'm not the target audience, so there is that. Yeah, I, I wish I was into it. I, I know some of you guys have bought it. If you have, let me know your take for sure. Part. 
The only purchases you can make in Helldivers 2 are for in-game currency, and the most expensive pack, as I said, is only $20. But Arrowhead Crazy. enables Helldivers players to just skip through the ground. To, to me, even that is not okay. Like, $20, come on, bro. Like, yeah, microtransactions to me are not okay, but it's like, every game got it, every game's gonna have it. Even that doesn't make it okay, but like, I feel like that he's about to bring a point if you wanna play the game naturally you can you can still get everything but like I i'm assuming that and, and okay if that's the case then yeah sure right uh, as long as the microtransactions are optional then cool but if it's not if it's like really like call of duty an 80 dollars punch 80 dollars micro punch my uh, uh monkey punch you kidding me right now what's so micro about that it's a mega transactions dog and buy as many credits as you want to unlock the next warbomb. However, you don't have to if you'd rather play the game organically and progress just by That's simply good. playing and enjoying the game. It's such a simple yet consumer-friendly concept. Call of Duty, on the other hand, uh -oh. uses a consumer predatory uh -oh. concept and that is genuinely sickening. Let me give you a prime example. There was a huge controversy going on in Modern Warfare 3 over what you say. You, you know what the crazy part here is that whenever he talks good about like Helldivers, he put like happy music and whenever he's about to talk about Call of Duty, he puts like depressing music. <laughs> <laughs> I just noticed that bro, that's, uh, that's brilliant. A bundle, but not just any bundle, the most expensive bundle in COD history. How much did it cost? 3400 COD points, Holy. which would potentially cost you $40. Guess what else costs $40? Yep. Yeah, okay, true. Call of Duty yeah, literally true, just then. tried selling a cringe ass bundle with the same price tag as a potential 2024 game of the year. Is that not insane to you? And, and to get that Gorilla Monkey Punch, it's like you have to spend, uh, you have to buy four different bundles, right? 2400 Call of Duty point each. So uh, I know on paper at the end it would sound like $100, but I guess, they, 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 you know, Activision got a deal, right? So if you buy a lot, of Call of Duty points in bulk, then towards the end you would be spending about eighty dollars, and then you would be able to get that monkey punch. And, and if you spend like, uh, 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 and then there's like another skin that you get for that one. I'm not sure, but apparently Charlie Intel and a lot of people are reporting hundred dollars. Now I'm not sure if it directly costs hundred dollars or you have to spend hundred dollars buying like other crap to get that. Right, like there's a difference there, but still it's a hundred dollars. I mean that's that's insane Like it's costing more than the actual game, bro. It's criminal. We're looking at you Activision. Get a clue real quick Tell me if this looks familiar That is the rigged Call of Duty experience. Want to know the funniest part in all this? The biggest complaint I've heard from COD players about Helldivers 2 is it gets boring because you're just doing the same thing over and over again. It's boring, and I'm just bro, sitting it's there boring. like, wow, that sounds awful familiar. It's not like that sums up the entire COD Call experience. Of Duty. Yeah. That is what you call a coping COD sucker. Aside from the dumbass hypocrites, though, Modern Warfare 3 lacks this one secret ingredient. It's the uh -oh. one ingredient that a game needs in order for it to be, you know, good. It's that F word, fun. Fun. Let's just say it flat out. Helldivers 2 is amazingly fun. And Call of Duty is about as fun as a night after eating Taco Bell. Could I playing playing Call of Duty, I always say this, playing Call of Duty is like working at McDonald's, but you are the one paying the CEO. Real quick before we get to the climax, guys, I gotta say I have a second channel. This is where I upload UFO content, conspiracy content every single day. If you're into that, Feel free to subscribe. We uploaded this uh, recently new video as well, and uh, we had some UFOs which are crazy. If you want to help support the channel, consider buying microtransactions on my channel, Bruh. guys. Become a member by clicking the join button next to the subscribe. Only if you want to help out the channel and you like what I do. Uh, right, let's get back to the content now, boo boo. I not say Call of Duty is just mind numbing, pointing and shooting, game after game. The truth is, you could say it about any game, so that's just a dumb argument. But Helldivers 2's gameplay is genuinely engaging, which makes the repetition of landing on a planet, shooting bugs, and extracting an addictive experience. For anyone out there who has played PS2, this game reminds me of those days. I remember just playing offline on Star Wars Battlefront 2 against bots and having a blast for hours on end. I always Damn, enjoyed those too, games huh? where there was constant chaos and endless fun. Those are the good times Helldivers 2 reminds me of, and I think that's why everyone loves to play this game. Unlike Modern Warfare 3, when you're not even in control of the game. <clears throat> it's rigged. It's and rigged. And yes, Call of Duty- and, and right now I'm thinking, right, like, if no one is playing Modern Warfare 3, now people are playing the game, it's not that no one is playing, it, it's just that the interest is very low, and I feel like the people that are playing, generally, most people, um, I, I'm not talking about- 
some probably like it. It's, uh, I mean, if Modern Warfare 3 happens to be, like, one of your recent game, uh, because it has remaster maps from the old games, right? So, like, if you never played the original Modern Warfare 2009, then everything Modern Warfare 3 gotta offer to you is brand new, it's fresh. You gotta think about it this way. Like, for me personally, nothing new in this game. Zombies, it's like a half-assed version. More, not even half-assed. Like, I think saying it half-assed, that's like disrespect to the word half-assed. Because it's so, like, it's half of the word half, if that Bruh. makes sense. It's quarter half, <laughs> quarter assed, okay? <laughs> Let's just say that. It's uh, they didn't even have a zombie man. They put zombies on wars on AI zombies. Uh, they, they put zombies from they took zombies from Black Ops Cold War four years ago, right? Put it, slapped it, bing, 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 slap that, slap that, bing, boom, bing, bing. There goes your uh, seventy dollars uh, disaster, which is Modern Warfare Three. If you're new to Call of Duty, then I, I I understand. I understand you might find it find it fun. And even I, I heard this from you guys as well in the comments that uh, and most of you guys are OG players of Call of Duty. And uh, I, I mean it's fair. Uh, some of you guys said that it's like playing this game is better than Modern Warfare 2. Like you like the gunplay, you like the the, the gameplay. And, and to be honest though, like Call of Duty always got like good gunplay and solid gameplay. Say a 60 FPS. Call of Duty is one of the only like biggest franchise out there that doesn't necessarily have a problem with like gameplay aspect it's always smooth you know there is that part that, that that's where i gotta give them credit it's always good uh, and I, I think the reason is simple because they have been doing it for so long the game comes out every year bro it comes out every year so they have perfected the formula in terms of like gameplay but it's like other than that like brad like campaign was mediocre multiplayer got no new maps right now it probably got like some decent new maps but like wow shocker they, they drop it after dropping a recycle ass game for full price had it been this game was like twenty dollars yeah cool you know i, I would have bought it i would have bought it yeah for twenty dollars absolutely but for seventy dollars uh, in canada right like plus taxes easily above hundred dollars a canadian so that's insane bro that is absolutely insane and then you gotta factor in that hundred dollar hundred dollar microtransaction usd by the way easily gonna go up to like 130 140 for me here in canada L let me know where you guys are, are watching this video from and you think like i'm insane even okay think about this way right you love modern warfare 3 okay that's fine but objectively speaking do you think that's okay i'm talking about even if you like it because yeah there are certain things that you know are bad but you kind of still like it right you know what i'm saying you know it's bad but you're like eh, eh, I, I like it though but i like it though but i like it though i i get it i get it but i i i wanna what i'm trying to get at here is that i don't want like sucking d sucking let me just say that i cannot say the word on youtube uh, i don't want that d sucking but i want you to be like truthful to yourself first of all and uh yeah i want that conversation as well in the comments he is a pvp first person shooter while hell divers 2 is a pve co-op third person shooter but you cannot deny how much different you feel when you play these two games if you play the old call duties one of the aspects of those classic games that is dearly missed is the social aspect of the game when lobbies stay together you know, yeah, when everyone yeah, yeah, had yeah. mics in the lobby and talked a whole lot of smack. Comment if you remember those days. Unlike today in MW3, when lobbies disband and you're likely to get banned by AI voice chat moderation. Here's oh, the awesome man. part of those old COD lobbies though. Not every lobby was toxic. Instead, you had yeah? the potential to meet some really cool people. If you had a good time playing together, that dude unexpectedly could turn out to be a lifelong friend. I've personally met a bunch of cool people as well, who I played COD with true, for years true. and still to this day. And that's the oh, same yeah. feeling I get when I play Helldivers 2. Other Yo, than the I, band I, spamming... The, the, the craziest thing here is that there was somebody in Brazil that I made friends with, uh, and I still have him on Facebook. I know it sounds kind of like, oh, yeah, 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 who uses Facebook? I, I get that, but like... But, but, but I remember, like, back in the PlayStation 3 days, you guys know, like, PlayStation Home? If you didn't know, it was, like, a social uh, social thing where you would just, like, walk around, right? The way I see it is that if Sony were to expand that, I could see that thing become, like... You, you, you ever seen that uh, Ready Player One movie? I could have seen that thing become that, but I'm talking, obviously, like, 20, 50 years from now, kind of, right? Like, if they keep on doing something like that. It was, like, the social hub back in the uh, the, the PlayStation 3 days, and, yeah, I apparently made friends uh, with him, and, you know, we were bad-mouthing each other, but then it's like, you become friends, right? What if, like, we had that AI chat thing, right? I would be banned. I would have been banned then. The Helldivers community reminds me of the old days of the Xbox 360 and PS3 voice chat. 
I love how the game promotes the social aspect of games and keeps lobbies together so that you can make new friends and enjoy the game together. This game is going to create memories. At a time when Call of Duty is prioritizing the profit over player enjoyment, Helldivers 2 serves as a big FU and COD players are loving it. Call of Duty is losing thousands of players to Helldivers 2 and is getting dominated by it in the Steam charts. Yeah, Helldivers yeah, yeah, 2 yeah, yeah. literally outsold Call of Duty Modern Warfare Holy. 3 for the month of February. For a game made by 100 developers, it's pretty it's insane It's they took down the yeah. Goliath that is Call of Duty. It's also pretty insane that you may not have liked the video and subscribed to the one yet. It's free and actually worth your time. I like the COD Battle Pass. So how did 100 developers beat 3? Like, like and subscribe, like and subscribe. Arrowhead Game Studios develops their sequel to Helldivers in 7 years, a game no one believed would see much traction, not even the developers. But man, the time and effort put into developing this game would end up paying off big time. After Pal World had just taken the gaming industry by storm, it was time for another indie developer team to take the industry Hell by notice, yeah. but this time even bigger. And on February 8th, 2024, that's exactly what happened. Helldivers 2 released, and it seems like overnight the game was everywhere. It was hard to ignore the overwhelmingly positive reviews it was receiving. As Helldivers 2 was starting to dominate the gaming universe, comparisons to Call of Duty became inevitable. Oh, Word course, got around yeah. that Helldivers 2 had surpassed Call of Duty on PlayStation Network, even Fortnite. That is insane for a game made by a small team. Jeez, bro, like even Fortnite? Okay, that, I didn't know about that one. Of 100 developers versus Call of Duty, who has 3,000 developers <laughs> and multiple teams working on their garbage games. The game got so big Man. that Arrowhead Games had to limit its server capacity oh, to yeah. 450,000 players because everyone wanted Was to get in on the action. And the servers could not handle it. Meanwhile, yeah. COD players are like, Get me out of here! The Call of Duty servers are about- Th That's like a good problem to have. It's like so many people are in line or so many people are playing that it's- And so many people have like flooded your servers that you do not have extra room for new people. That's- That's a good problem to have, I'll- I'll, I'll be fair. That- that's- that really is a good problem. They were not anticipating and I think it's good that that happened because I feel like that- you know, right now PlayStation is like- and they were- oh yeah, like anybody that denies it is a moron, right? Like, PlayStation themselves said it. I, I know it sounded kind of funny, but deep down it was the goddamn truth. Basically, you know, when that entire like Activision fighting was happening, Xbox wanting Activision, <laughs> Sony was like, no, please don't go, please don't go, I need Call of Duty, I need Call of Duty. You know, PlayStation was struggling, a and uh, yeah, they, they were like, we can never create a, a game like Call of Duty, and that's true though. They Yeah, Call of Duty, the, the brand name is just like big, it's so big, bro. Like, you know, every year it sells the best. Uh, like Modern Warfare 3, so what? It became number two. It, it became number two in, in the year 2023. Like I believe Hogwarts Legacy beat it. Be but but you gotta understand, Hogwarts Legacy came out like early in the year. I believe February 2023, uh, and Modern Warfare 3 came out like November of 2023. So still, think about it. Like second best game. January was the best. February, Helldivers overtook it. All right, makes sense. But like. If you, I, I still, I mean, listen, I, just being honest here, by the end of 2024, I don't, yeah, I wouldn't be shocked if Modern Warfare 3 is the best-selling game in comparison to Helldivers, but not just that, we're gonna be getting, like, Black Ops Gold for a COD 2024. Yay! You forgot about that, right? New Call of Duty coming this year, buckos. Uh, so that's probably gonna beat Helldivers. If not, it's gonna become number two. So Call of Duty is just like a juggernaut. It's gonna do well regardless what regardless of what you say, what I say, what people say. It's the best. But it's good to see Helldivers killing it. And we need more games like that. And I, I think right now, uh, a, a PlayStation is definitely like feeling confident in terms of trying out like more games similar to Helldivers. Not necessarily like similar in terms of the same genre or playstyle, but in terms of, hey, we need to have more games with the similar uh, similar like uh, fashion or similar way so we can have more of these live service games that are players first can have microtransactions but still not as egregious as Call of Duty so I think that's good and I'm sure like Microsoft is looking at it they're probably I, I would like to believe that they're gonna try something in the future they had uh, other other games uh, which I cannot think of right now uh, uh, Hi-Fi Rush is the only game that comes to my mind but not even close to Helldivers of course it's a different game altogether uh, but 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 yeah I, I think uh, Helldivers is definitely a, a good thing to happen in uh, for the gaming industry absolutely it's empty as the COD players wallets 
and brains. Helldivers 2 is dominating Call of Duty in the Steam charts as well, consistently ranking in the top 10, which is really sad considering Call of Duty's player count is counted across Modern Warfare 3, Modern Warfare 2, and Warzone. Embarrassing. One thing that was glaring to me though, was the wave of COD players moving over to Helldivers 2. Comment if you're one of these players, but I'd be lying if I told you I didn't notice the horde of comments from COD players I received about Helldivers 2 urging me to give it a shot. Yeah, so yeah me too, me too. caused me to say, let's dive right into this. Pun intended. Uh oh. Helldivers 2 draws comparison to and inspiration from multiple games like Gears of War, Deep Rock Galactic, and Warhammer. But let oh, me tell you right now, it would be criminal to downplay the creative vision Arrowhead Games had for Helldivers 2. Right from the jump, I was all in on democracy. The opening intro scene assured me that this was going to be an immersive experience. The satire and meme culture are what separates Helldivers 2 more than any other game I've played. The serious and epic tone combined with the satirical and humorous tone make the perfect blend. Considering we live in an era of meme culture, it makes the tone even more perfect. And that is catchy. I swear, it's gotten every player to speak the words democracy, freedom, democracy. and liberty at least once a day. Yeah. But the experience of Helldivers 2 in its entirety is the pinnacle of immersion. One yeah. thing I find really cool is when you're in the spaceship, you can look down on the planet at other players fighting in real time. It genuinely makes you feel a part of the environment. But the coolest part? Launching into battle with the boys. Or should I say, descending to a planet from outer space at a rate faster than a cod sucker spends money on a new bundle. But the immersive experience does not stop at the epic descent. <laughs> it really begins on the battlefield. As a longtime Call of Duty fan, I never thought in my wildest dreams I'd enjoy a co-op third-person shooter about shooting bugs. But let me tell you, the chaos is unmatched. In the soulless era of modern gaming, Helldivers 2... Yeah, you guys think that it's too late to get into Helldivers or, or what? Because I, I heard this from Mr. T Lexify as well because he's a zombies uh, guy. I, and I love Call of Duty Zombies. I just don't like the recent trash that they have been producing. But like, I, I'm a fan of uh, the, the zombies and I know I, uh, about how it works. And Mr. T Lexify was kind of like saying that Helldivers is basically that. But like, you're instead of shooting zombies, you're shooting bugs. And there's a whole lot of other aspects to it. Which uh, that kind of resonated to me in a way. Because I'm like, and watching this, like, yeah, absolutely. Just replace those bugs like zombies. And then then you got like uh yeah kind of like the similar formula but but still different uh, obviously it's not zombies i'm not saying it's zombies but you know that's like a way for you to cope and kind of like get into it if that makes sense uh just to get your foot uh in the door if uh, if it if that makes sense uh, do you think it's too late now or always uh it's so damn in? fun i appreciate how tension builds when you draw attention to the bugs and the music picks up intensity as they begin swarming you and your boys it causes this constant feeling of panic and fight or flight and i think it's what engages you fully into the game you also okay. can fight robots in different planets and it oddly feels like an entirely new experience i don't know why but going from fighting bugs to robots feels like going from a fun panic to legitimate fear. The atmosphere totally changes to a more eerie feeling. It's like, damn, I feel like I'm fighting the Call of Duty developers. And there's probably <laughs> about 3,000 of them too. Yeah. But that just speaks uh, thank you for subscribing. to how Appreciate immersive it. Helldivers 2 truly is. And if you want to make it even more interesting, you can increase the difficulty. But don't let your head get too big. If you don't have strong enough stratagem, you will get wrecked. Which is why I say, thanks Sweet Liberty for progression. The variety of currencies encourages you to play more to unlock more. Imagine that. Yeah. Stratagem are unlocked by leveling up and acquiring requisition slips, which require you to complete missions. Medals enable you to progress through the war bond and unlock new weapons and armor. Okay. Samples, which are only found on the planet, enable you to upgrade your character through ship modules. This could include decreasing the stratagem cooldown and the deployment time, so you get the point. Progression is rewarding, but super mm. credits tell an even bigger story. The most expensive pack is only $20 for 2100 super credits, and you can unlock both of the premium war bonds with it. I know, crazy concept. Crazy. Rather than forcing your players to pay a disgusting amount of money for cosmetics, yeah. you give them the option to play for them too. The whole game is littered with that crap, bro. Like, that's insane, man. Uh, yeah, like you can have microtransactions, but like damn can a brother also get some content in the game as well It's like the the content in the game has replaced Microtransactions, it's like you buy a game But if you want to play more and you want to have good content you 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 have to pay more uh, and buy these bundles It's insane Earn them. pay to win is out the door in Helldivers 2, but why is this such a big deal? Well, it's a big deal because Helldivers 2 is representing a shift in game development. 
I like that. A shift in which yeah. developers care more about making players happy than scamming their players, like yeah, in Modern yeah, Warfare yeah. 3. As and then the and the entire thing with like the woke games and the non woke games. Obviously, I see your guys' comments. I see like what people are saying online, and it's like a, a shift is happening right now. You know, a, a lot of people are like, "Well, you go woke, okay? Thank you for saving me money, right? You want to do this kind of trash? Thank you for saving me money." I mean, yeah, kids are definitely still gonna buy. They don't care. I mean, yeah, whatever. But uh, but but like, I I think regardless and, and i know gamers always get a bad rep in terms of like gamers always talk right gamers talk there are topics that gamers would discuss that nobody else would okay that's that's the positive point but i said it before and i'll say it again and guys it's the truth okay if you disagree you're likely an older guy no disrespect i'm 27 i'm an older guy too so like if you're my age a little bit younger or a little bit older or a lot more older i'm putting you and myself in like older dudes category because you and i we can do more than just talking and we can go ahead and perhaps not buy a game and perhaps not support a studio if they are let's just say racist or sexist towards a male uh, surprise surprise a uh, surprise surprise uh right and if they add the woke stuff we're like okay whatever you guys can keep that woke stuff and whatever we're not gonna buy it right but a lot of gamers they don't have that discipline bro like uh there are a lot of younger dudes that are like hey whatever i'll buy it. i need that dopamine i need that dopamine so th there's that so this is why i said it before and i'll say it again boycotts do not work but 110 percent like uh if there is a lot of fuss about it and a lot of people uh and they do some bad stuff and put like woke stuff dei stuff and and on top like pay to win microtransactions of course there will be damage of course they're gonna lose money call of duty didn't make the same amount of money they did with like warzone call of duty mobile because they're free to play microtransactions behemoths right they made that but with like actual like modern warfare 3 they did not why because people didn't like what it had to offer it was overpriced on top now they're b busting out crazy amount of microtransactions and they're and the reason they're going that high with 80 dollars and 100 dollars they know p a player base is low so people that are gonna buy are also low so people buying the microtransactions are also low but if those people buy it we're gonna make a lot more money so for example like if the uh, the, the microtransaction is 20 dollars they would need four people to buy four times 20 80 right so they would need four people it's a lot more easier to convert one person buying 80 dollars than it is to convert four people buying 20 dollars you feel what i'm saying so i think this is the logic they're they're using and uh, yeah bro they're yeah a uh, saudi money <laughs> oil prince money uh and they're definitely suckers out there they're rich af so they got money coming from them the fans, we deserve the best possible game that is actually worth the money spent. I Hell agree. Divers 2 is a beautiful example of what happens when developers and publishers do right by their fans. You get yeah. the praise and loyalty you deserve. Uh -huh. I still remember the first time I picked up this game and it felt like I was in a trance. I was like, wow, a live service game that doesn't want to make me punch myself in the nose? The saddest part about this is it goes to show how much Call of Duty has lowered people's standards. It's Sadly. gross how they remain best sellers based on their name alone. Yeah. God relies on marketing their big name, validated only by the greatness of their past, to sell their broken games. That's what's most impressive about Helldivers 2 though. No one even knew Helldivers 1 existed, but Arrowhead games have outdone themselves. Think about Truly. a game you picked up and instantly fell in love with. For me personally, that was Helldivers 2. Dang. And I'm sure you could relate to this one, but it could be any game for you. When I first yeah, played yeah, Helldivers yeah. 2, it caused me to utter words that I never say while playing Call of Duty. I'm having fun. Having so fun. ask yourself again, yeah, that, that's a good video, man. W video, I'm the one. Shout out to I'm the one. And guys, recently this happened as well. I'm not sure if you guys were able to catch it on time. Yeah, guys, check it out. The woke agenda has been fully exposed. I'm not sure if this video will stay up or not. Uh, because there's stuff. I, I might have to like take it out from it. And maybe then it will be cool. If you have seen it, you have seen it. But if you have not, check it out. And I'll see you right there.